My Little Pony, the movie, the junior novel. Chapter 8. The ponies were delirious as they trudged across the barren desert landscape, barely moving at all. Oh dear. The hot sun bore down on their hides. They were dusty, achy, and so thirsty they couldn't remember what water tasted like. They had already come so far. Drops of salty sweat poured down their muzzles, and their eyes were ringed with dark circles of deep exhaustion. It felt as if Twilight Sparkle and her friends had been trotting their whole lives. Saving Equestria! <laughs> Pinkie Pie laughed to herself maniacally. Oh, look! She plucked an ancient bird skull from the dunes and from the dunes. Sand poured from its eye sockets. Maybe this guy knows which way to go. Pinky held the skull to her ear. What's that? We're lost? She tossed the skull and erupted into a fit of fanatical giggles before collapsing into a sandy dune. <laughs> Nearby, Spike was struggling with a wayward prickly cactus that had adhered itself to its bottom. We could be going in circles. Endless sand. Nothing for miles but sand. <coughs> Spike coughed and sputtered. His throat was so dry. And this road. A road? said Twilight Sparkle, perking up. Where there's a road, there's a... She trotted forward, cresting the nearest dune. What she saw next took her breath away. There was a city. Yup, where there's a road, there's a city. Kluge Town was unlike any city Twilight had ever seen, stacked high with dark smoking spires and foreign buildings. Even the path to the city looked on a looked ominous, littered with old wreckage that jutted out from the sand. But it was something. Ooh, a city! Pinkie Pie bounded forward with renewed energy. We're doing it, you guys! She squealed in delight. The other ponies rushed forward to join her, wondering aloud what sort of amenities might await them. Rarity was hoping for a spa, but every pony else was just eager to rest, find some food, and gather information where to find the queen of the hippos. But as, but as soon as they entered the main gates of Kluge Town, it instantly became clear that this was not the sort of place a pony would we wanted to find herself alone. Mm-mm. The group stuck close to one another, anxiously alert to the strange sights and sounds. Creatures who looked like giant rhinoceroses, beastly hogs, and prickly porcupines grunted as they hawked them, as they hawked mysterious goods from their vendor stalls. Other townsfolk emerged from shadows and to peek at and greedily taunt the candy-colored equines as they pa as they passed. That's a lovely horn. How much? A cloaked, a cloaked monster whispered to Rarity as she trotted along. Rarity's face contor contorted into horror at the very thought of selling her horn. Across the way, a tower of spiky-beaked birds in cages squawked at Fluttershy as she neared them. They were scary looking. But Fluttershy couldn't imagine what sort of beasts thought it was okay to trap the poor little babies. Twilight searched the perilous streets for a friendly face. Any creature would do, just as long as they could give some sort of information about where exactly they were right now. Then Twilight noticed a street vendor struggling to tie barrels of cargo to his cart. A wayward barrel sprang loose and toppled the entire pile. Let me help you with that. The princess sprang into action, using her magic to catch the barrel in question. But the beast just growled at her to get away from his cart. Oh yeah, he was like, hey, 
no magic around my merchandise. Not even so much as a thank you. No respect, I tell you. No respect. Now, I know we need help, but be careful who you talk to. Twilight warned the others in a low whisper and try to blend in. But it was too late. Wait, but it was too late. Pinkie Pie was already bounding forward into the market square, screaming at, screaming at the top of her lungs. Can any pony take us to the queen of the hippos? She shouted gleefully. <sighs> Darn it, Pinkie. A gigantic blue monster with fish-like fins scoffed in disgust at Pinkie Pie's lack of awareness for the rules. You want something? You gotta give something, he grunted. Oh, Pinky giggled and proceeded to offer the beast a big hug, a mane comb with a few curly pink hairs woven through its teeth, and a picture of her sister Maud. When he refused all her offers, Pinkie Pie held out a little white ball. How about this breath mint? Pinky leveled with the stinky breast fish monster. Seriously, buddy, help me help you. Twilight and the others watched, growing more nervous with each passing minute. This didn't seem like the sort of place a pony should go around teasing any creature. Twilight darted to Pinky's side and pulled her away from the growling creature. You can't just take off, and you don't need to announce to every... Relax, Twilight. I totally got this. Pinky smiled, waving her hoof nonchalantly. But the two pony friends were so caught up in their conversation that they didn't notice a group of ruffians closing in on them. Rarity, Applejack, and Fluttershy took a few steps back toward one another. Even Rainbow Dash looked shaken by the shouts of the pushy mob. How much for the giant gecko? yelled one, pointing to Spike. Uh, Twilight shook her head. Spike isn't for sale. I want that fancy purple hair, shouted another. I'll give you two hippos for it. Two hippos? Rarity cried out indignantly. It's worth more than that. Unfortunately, this caused the bidding war for for everything the ponies had, and the ponies themselves, to get louder. The vendors shouted and argued with one another over their pony prizes as they got closer and closer to the ponies. The friends held on to one another in terror and closed their eyes. Twilight couldn't help but think that this could be the end of their journey before it, before it had even begun. Stay tuned for chapter nine. See you later. Bye.